today we want to beat every single Pokemon champion, and there is a lot of them, as Ash Ketchum, but this time using his Hoenn and Battle Frontier team. I'll try to keep his moveset as accurate as possible when possible, and if he does manage to beat them all, there's three powerful trainers he must face to claim victory. We'll also add a few more rules for added difficulty. With that, can Ash's Hoenn team beat every Pokemon champion? First up is Pokemon Fire Red, and we have the champion for this game, Blue. He's got some strong Pokemon that we're going to have to deal with, but he's also got a pretty balanced team. So do we, too. We have some good moves and, well, some not-so-good moves, but let's begin. Blue's lead is his Pidgeot, and we lead off with Pikachu. He'll probably be our lead for the whole entire run. This gives us a great matchup versus Pidgeot, who instantly goes down to Pikachu's Volt Tackle attack. Second out is Rhydon, and we've got a switch. I decide to swap this time into Sceptile, who dodges a Rock Tomb on the swap. We then outspeed to slow rock type and deliver a leaf blade to his horn for super effective damage taking him out this brings out blue's arcanine a powerful fire type intimidating us lowering our attack we actually have very little to deal with this threat apart from torkoal and corefish we swap out on the flamethrower to corefish and it brings us close to half still we then take a flamethrower to 7 hp and we get burned as our crab hammer does nearly half back before we fall to our flames. I send out Torkoal next, who eats the flamethrower rather well, considering we got critical hit, and we hit a body slam of our own. I don't want to put him in full restore range, so we send out Swellow, who doesn't take a flamethrower well, but does survive it. We then can hit an aerial ace to bring the strong fire type finally down. Blue sends out his Alakazam next, and we just aerial ace it for a critical hit one shot, repaying the RNG favor. This brings out Executor, but the three-headed eggplant stands no chance versus Swellow's flying moves, although it actually does survive, but he misses attack anyway, so we bring him down the next turn. Blue's last Pokemon is his ace, Blastoise. We get off around 25% before Blastoise brings Swallow down too. Now we just go into Sceptile to deliver a super effective Leaf Blade, putting him really low, as the Hydro Pump does decent damage back to us. Blastoise heals with his Citrus Berry, bringing him out of full restore range. Sceptile then brings down Blue's ace with a Leaf Blade, defeating Generation 1's champion, and Ash becomes champion of Kanto. On to Johto now. Lance is a champion of Jolto in the next we face. He's a dragon type champion with a lot of flying types, so Glalie is going to be a menace to him, I believe. Let's see how Ash fares this time. Lance's lead is Gyarados, and that's a really good matchup for our Pikachu, who once again can destroy the champion's lead Pokemon with a super effective Thunderbolt. This brings out Dragonite, his ace, and it's level 50. I choose to hit a Thunderbolt before Pikachu dies to a single outrage. Now it's time for Glalie. One super effective Ice Beam destroys his Dragonite, and out next, Lance chooses Aerodactyl. It outspeeds Glalie and Rock Slides us for fantastic damage, but we hold on, and we Ice Beam for the one shot too. Now is Charizard. I swap into Torkoal as he Fire Fangs us for practically nothing. We then take an Air Slash, and we get flinched. We take another Air Slash, but Torkoal falls. I now go into Swellow, and I tell it to Aerial Ace doing good damage to Charizard, as an Air Slash is demolishing us. We then Wing Attack the following turn to bring him low, before Swellow falls to Charizard too. Surely we've now done enough damage for Glalie to take it out with an Ice Beam. Lance decides to full restore, and this is bad, but we then do over half, and we freeze Charizard. So the next turn, another Ice Beam, and Charizard falls. His last two Pokemon are both Dragonites with a four times weakness to Ice, so one Ice Beam brings down the first, and then the second stands very little chance too, and falls to Glalie's Ice Power, making Ash champion of Johto. And next, we face two champions in Hoenn. In Pokemon Ruby, Steven is the champion. He's got mainly Rock and Steel types, and I'm not sure how this fight will go. It could be an easy pushover or a struggle. Let's take on Hoenn's first champion. Steven's lead is Skarmory and for the third time Pikachu has a type advantage against all these pesky flying types. We hit a Thunderbolt on the Steel Bird to just take it straight down. Good start. Second out is Agron. I just Thunderbolt again as it's got poor special defense and we do good damage before being taken out by a single earthquake. We send out our Corefish to raise his claw and strike Agron down with a crab hammer, but this just brings out the ancient grass type Cradilly, who we then miss an attack on and instantly takes down Corefish with a single Giga Drain. Yikes. We send out our Fire Tortoise Torkoal next, and we hit a pretty hard flamethrower before we get hit with a Confuse Ray. We then hit ourselves in confusion because of course we do, and we take an ancient power to the face. The next turn we do break through our confusion though, and we bring Cradilly down with an attack. So Steven decides to send out his ace Metagross. It's faster than Torkoal and hits an earthquake, but Torkoal is quite bulky, and it survives it on only 13 HP. Then Torkoal breaks through his confusion once again to melt the Psychic and Steel type with a flamethrower, bringing down his ace Pokemon. Out comes another Psychic type Claydol, who just throws rocks at us and takes Torkoal out. I send out Glalie to freeze his breath and hit an Ice Beam for fantastic damage, nearly taking him out, as he sets up a 
the light screen. Now Steven stalls us for a while, and I mean quite a while. Zara Ice Beam doesn't quite do enough damage to take him out, so with light screen, he just full restores and gets off a little bit of damage each time on Glalie. But eventually, light screen does wear off, and his stalling comes to an end as Glalie takes him out with a high rolling Ice Beam, from 100 to 0. This leaves just the ancient bug Armaldo left. We ice beam for fantastic damage, but more rocks thrown at us brings down Glalie. Guess we found our weakness to our hoeing team. But we can just send out Swallow now, who actually doesn't kill with an aerial ace, and we take an ancient power once again, bringing us very, very low. Steven's used all his heals, however, so a final wing attack brings down his final Pokemon, and Ash is halfway to being the champion of hoeing. Our second champion for Generation 3 is Wallace. He's a water type specialist with some powerful Pokemon. Pikachu and Sceptile hopefully can just demolish him, but his Pokemon can really put a dent in our team too. Let's take on the final Hoenn champion. Wallace leads with a massive Wailord and we lead off with Pikachu once again. A great matchup. Well sort of, as a Thunderbolt does in fact bring the Whale down as we critical hit him. Great start to the fight. Second Wallace sends out Gyarados and he's throwing for some reason. It's four times weak to Electric, so one Thunderbolt and the Water Snake falls too. Then is Whiskash, a tough matchup for our Pikachu. But we've got the perfect answer in Sceptile. We swap into him and we take a pathetic Earthquake before slashing with a four time super effective leaf blade to bring him down. But now is my Lotic. Sceptile does a leaf blade for good damage, but it tanks it rather nicely as it's so bulky and ice beams us to nearly death. We leaf blade once more, bringing my Lotic to the red as an ice beam brings down Sceptile. Now if Wallace heals, we're in big trouble. But thanks to the berry that my Lotic has, it brings it out of full restore range and Pikachu takes it down with a Thunderbolt. Next out is Tentacruel. It's pretty bulky so it survives an electric attack from our yellow mouse and misses a toxic. So we just take it out of a Thunderbolt the next turn, leaving just a dancing Ludicolo left. With Thunderbolt again doing great damage as he starts to double team, that's not good. We connect a second attack bringing Ludicolo to the red as he leech seeds us, healing himself out of full restore range. Then Pikachu connects a third Thunderbolt to bring down Ludicolo, beating Wallace and Ash becomes champion of Hoenn. It's time to sail to Sinnoh next. Cynthia is the champion of the Sinnoh region. Her team is a powerful one. How will Ash's Hoenn team fare? Let's find out. Cynthia's lead is Spirit Tomb and we lead off with Pikachu. We do barely any damage with a Thunderbolt and we nearly die to a single Dark Pulse. Our next Thunderbolt puts him low, but then we do fall to a Dark Pulse. I go into Corefish now as Cynthia full restores a Ghost type. We hit a Crab Hammer for actually more damage than I expected. The next turn we outspeed and we take down Spirit Tomb with another attack. This brings out her Roserade, so we swap straight into Swellow and we take the Energy Ball. Then with a swift wing attack, we bring down Roserade. This brings out her Milotic. First I swap into Corefish as she Ice Beams us. Then we take a Surf and we hit a pretty nice Crab Hammer back I must say. Then the next turn, we just die to a Surf anyway. I now send out Sceptile and with a single Leaf Blade we knock out Milotic. So far, this is just a one-for-one one battle. Out comes Togekiss. We Leaf Blade for a little bit of damage, and we take an Air Slash, putting us low. I opt to Leaf Blade once more, bringing Togekiss lower as we then fall to an Aura Sphere. Now, I go into Glalie, who can outspeed Togekiss, and we can knock it out with an Ice Beam. Then, is a Fighting-type Lucario. I decide to stay in an Ice Beam. We do a bit of damage, but we snag a Freeze. Perfect. We Ice Beam again, putting Lucario low, as it falls out and luckily misses an attack, meaning Glalie single-handedly takes down a Luke. Cario. Her final Pokemon is a race Garchomp, but it's four times weak to ice, and we know Glalie is a demolisher of dragons, and we just take it out. Beating Cynthia, and Ash becomes champion of the Sinnoh region. It's time to head to Unova where two champions await us. First up in Gen 5 is Alder, and he's got some solid Pokemon, with a big weakness to fire with a few bugs on his team. I honestly think Torkoal can put in some solid work, but Bufalon could be an issue. Alder's lead is a Selgore, and I actually chose to lead with Torkoal this time. I'm expecting to take a hit, but our slow turtle dodges a Focus Blast and burns the bug with a single Flamethrower. Out comes Bufalon. We just Flamethrower again, and we get a burn as we tank an Earthquake. This is going perfect. A final Flamethrower, and down the Buffalo goals. This brings out a Scavalier. It's four times times weak to fire so Torkoal toasts his steel type and half of Alder's team has now been swept by a Torkoal. But now is Volcarona a huge threat. We have to play this right. We swap into Swallow as I see him set up a Quiver Dance boosting his stats. So we swap back to Torkoal trying to predict the overheat and we get it right. This lowers his stats once more. Now we go back into Swallow as he Quiver Dances again and our wing attack brings Volcarona really low. We then luckily dodge an overheat and we take it down with an Aerial Ace. Out comes the Ice Cream Vanillix. We get off some chip damage with 
with an area lace before we fall to a single blizzard. I go into Pikachu now and we Iron Tail Vanillix putting it in the red as a single blizzard takes down Pikachu. Sup to Corefish now as Alder full restores and we Metal Claw for good damage. Vanillix then goes for a light screen raising his team's special defense as we just keep on Metal Clawing. We then take a weak flash cannon and we bring down the ice cream and we get an attack raise. Nice. Now is Drudagon, his final Pokemon. We Crab Hammer for good damage but we're very frail and Corefish falls to an outrage. I go into Glalie, who we all know by now is a dragon killer, and we take out Drudigon with an ice beam. At least I thought we would, but he survives and hits an outrage bringing us low, but we survive too. Then we take him down the next turn, beating our first Unova champion. It's time to move on to the second. Iris is the second champion and the majority of her Pokemon are dragons. I'm not worried about her at all. We've got Glalie, and I'm sure he's going to be able to put in some serious work. Let's find out. Iris' lead is Hydreigon, and we lead off with Pikachu. I Thunderbolt for a little bit of chip damage before a single Dragon Pulse ends our poor little mouse. So we go straight into Glalie and with a single Ice Beam knocking out Hydreigon. Drudigon is her second choice but he falls too to a single Ice Beam. Third she sends out Archeops. I just stay in and keep Ice Beaming and down he goes too. Fourth is Agron. I decide now to swap into Corefish as he actually goes for an Automize raising his speed. We then get out speed, hit with a double edge but we survive it and we hit a massive Crab Hammer. Then the next turn Corefish just falls. We can now send out Torkoal who's bulky enough to survive a double edge and bring Agron down with a flamethrower. Iris's ace Haxorus is on the field now. We have to stay in an attack to break the focus sash as we take an earthquake and we do about 25% back with a flamethrower. The next turn Torkoal falls to Haxorus but it's time to send back out Glalie who outspeeds her ace and brings it down with an ice beam. This leaves her with just the last Pokemon which is Lapras. We don't really have a great way to deal with this thing right now. I just start headbutting but we get put to sleep. So I spend a few turns just spamming headbutts while we're sleeping and then Glalie eventually falls to her Lapras. Now we go into Swellow and we Aerial Ace for good damage as a single attack brings us down. This battle is just flipped but thankfully we have whittled down Lapras just enough for Sceptile to come out and take out Lapras with a Leaf Blade. Beating Iris and Ash becomes Champion of Univer. With our eyes now set to Kalos, let's move on to the 3DS games. Diantha is the Champion of Kalos and who we take on next. Her team's pretty strong and she's got a Mega Gardevoir. Our team is starting to look weaker as we're progressing through these games against these champion teams too but I do have faith we can keep it going. Dianfa's lead is a fight and flying type Paulucha and we lead Pikachu once again with the type matchup. They really like to lead flying types these champions. A single Thunderbolt from Pikachu that critical hits, lucky again, and we bring it down. This just brings out a huge T-Rex versus our little mouse soul. We miss an Iron Tail and then we take a head smash and we just instantly get knocked out. We send out our little Corefish next to hit a Crab Hammer for massive damage as he once again head smashes taking us out but he takes himself out in the process. I now decide to send out Swellow as Diantha chooses Aurorus bad matchup for us. So I just wing attack before we dodge a blizzard. Then we aerial ace and we dodge another blizzard. Swallow is defying all odds as we dodge a third blizzard. We bring Aurorus really low before finally she does connect an attack and we fall. You did good Swallow. I now go into Sceptile ready to try and clean up. We leaf blade to knock out the ice dinosaur but this brings out Gudra, a bulky dragon type. So we swap into Torkoal on the incoming fire move which we absorb really nicely. Then our flamethrowers are really not doing much damage but I just want chip on it. Gudra is also missing some muddy waters so it just becomes a fight of trying to get off as much damage as I can. We get Gudra to about under half before Gudra takes down Torkoal. Enter Glalie. With that extra damage done an ice beam for sure takes Gudra out and means Glalie remains untouched. This brings out Galgeist who's an easy one hit knockout with a freezing ice beam. Leaving her last Pokemon and her ace Gardevoir. We shoot an ice beam off with Glalie but we don't even do half as a Moonblast in return brings us below half and reduces our special attack. So our next Ice Beam does even less, but she looks like she's in range now for our last Pokemon, Sceptile. It's a 1v1 to become champion of Kalos. Sceptile outspeeds the Mega and knocks her out with a Leaf Blade, beating Generation 6 and Ash becomes champion of Kalos. It's time to set sail to Alola next. How is the person we fight to become champion here and he's always one of the most trickiest. His team really does pack a punch. Honestly, this was impossible with our team. We don't pack the power to take him down. I tried this fight many, many times and with Pikachu and Corefish being so frail, we could barely take down more than two Pokemon. So like Ash, I called in some backup from Professor Oak and Pokemon he used or was seen in the Battle Frontier. That means we have a Tauros, a Charizard and of course Snorlax giving us a powerful team. But is this enough to finally beat Hal? How's Lee 
leaders and Laura and Raichu and I lead off with Tauros. This pesky electric type needs to fall, and Tauros being an extremely fast Pokemon outspeeds the surfing Raichu and takes him down with an earthquake. This brings out House Tauros, and it's a bold standoff. We get intimidated Laura in our attacks, so we're at a disadvantage at the moment. We outspeed and shake the earth, doing good damage to the bull as he hits a double edge, doing massive damage back, and taking recoil too. All we can do is throw another earthquake on him, bringing him low, as he hits another double edge and takes us out. But he puts himself in the red fangs to recoil. We send out Sceptile, and on House Full Restore, we Leaf Blade, and we're doing just above half. So our next Leaf Blade, he survives, hits a double edge, and nearly takes out Sceptile, but he does die from recoil. Phew. Another threat down, but now is Incineroar. I decide to stay in to get off some damage as the Leaf Blade does about a quarter. Incineroar flare blitzes Sceptile to knock him out. Now, we don't really have a good option to deal with this. I go into Snorlax to bait the Z move, and I swap into Charizard and it worked. He does go for it. By doing a dance, he activates his Z-Crystal and his move, Inferno Overdrive. Charizard still gets absolutely blasted from Inferno Overdrive, however, but we do survive. Looking at our moveset now, it's pretty poor. Not many good options. All I can really do is Dragon Breath that does tiny damage, but we do get a Paralyze. Then Incineroar Darkest Lariats us and Charizard falls. It's now a three on four and this is looking bleak again. Snorlax hits a Stab Body Slam, but our attack is not good enough. Luckily, with the massive damage we take from Flare Blitz, Incineroar doesn't get healed, but he falls to his own recoil. Well, that could have been game over. How's next Pokemon is Crabominable, and he revenge kills Snorlax with an Ice Hammer instantly. So we're now down to our last two Pokemon now. I go into Torkoal and I flamethrow the Ice Crab, and that's enough for the knockout, leaving a two on two. Noivern and Leafeon versus Glalie and Torkoal. We have the tight matchup technically, but I'm not sure. We stay in and take a Dragon Pulse as I body slam, fishing for a Paralysis, and we get it. Noivern still faster than Torkoal though and knocks him out the next turn. This leaves us with Glalie to take on Noivern and Leafeon. Thanks to the very lucky paralysis, Glalie can outspeed the super fast dragon and knock it out with an ice beam, leaving just a Leafeon left. Leafeon is quicker, hits the Leaf Blade for massive damage, and we knock it out though with a single Ice Beam in a very, very close and hard battle, even with an upgraded team. But Ash is finally the champion of Lola, as he should be, and we move on. So for Trace, I'm going all in for a Pikachu sweep to see if it's possible. You can have max AVs to 200, making you practically a god, and to be honest, we're already Kanto champion, so let's just end Trace. The battle starts off with Trace leading Pidgeot, and we lead off with, well, Pikachu. Now this Pikachu Pikachu is special, sort of like Ashes. It has signature moves that should allow us to hit everything. As Trace Mega Evolves his Pidgeot, we hit a Zippy Zap, and I've never seen a HP bar disappear so fast, holy moly. Out comes Trace's Vileplume, and usually it would brick wall us, but we have a move called Floaty Fall, and that's a flying move, so we take down Vileplume. Okay, so far so good. Now is Rapidash. We just go for a Zippy Zap, but it actually survives it weirdly enough, then hits a Flare Blitz. But Pikachu is a hardened veteran and shrugs it off like it's nothing. Trace then cheats going for a full restore as we now go for a splishy splash on the waves and we take down Rapidash with the water type move. This brings out his Marowak, but you can probably guess what move we're going to go for. Yep a splishy splash, and down Marowak goes too. Next out, Slowbro, who's actually bulky enough to tank a zippy zap that always critical hits, and he hits us with a surf. Trace, just like Steven, now full restore stalls us for a while, but eventually he accepts Slowbro will fall and so he does to Pikachu, leaving an electric versus electric standoff. We surf on the waves doing good damage as Jolteon can't really hurt us. We just keep splishy splashing as Trace now tries to stall us out once again with more full restores, but he eventually uses his last one and Pikachu takes down Jolteon, sweeping Trace and defending our title with Champion of Kanto. Up next, the Gala region. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is really strong with a Gigantamax Charizard with some huge friends. We've also had to say goodbye to Swellow, as he's not in these games. Thanks, Dexit. But we substitute in Snorlax once again. Leon's lead is his Aegis Slash, and we're leading off with Pikachu. It's really tough for our Pikachu to stand such a strong Pokemon. As Aegis Slash tries to stall us out of the King Shield turn one, the second turn we get to hit a Thunderbolt, doing a surprising amount of damage before Aegis Slash decides it's had enough of Pikachu and takes him out of a single Shadow Ball. So I go into Torkoal. Torkoal can turn up the heat and knock Aegis Slash out now of a single Flame 
flamethrower. This brings out Haxorus. Haxorus hits an earthquake, but our bulky Torkoal tanks it, and then we deliver a flamethrower for a little bit of chip damage too. Haxorus shakes the ground once more, and our fire turtle finally falls. Now I send out Glalie, who matches up well versus dragons. We ice beam, and it allows us to finish off the first of Leon's dragons. Now he sends out his second dragon in Dragapult. That's a lot of dragger. It's faster than our ball of ice, and hits the flamethrower. Glalie hangs on in the yellow, and one hit KO's Dragapult with a stab ice beam. Leon then sends out Mr. Rhyme, the dancing Mr. Mime. I really don't have many ways to deal with this thing, so I just ice beam to get off any damage, as a psychic actually doesn't knock us out, and we survive on a sliver. We then get off another ice beam, bringing him close to half, before we fall. Looking at my Pokemon, we're slowly losing this battle. We send out Corefish, who has access to Metal Claw, a super effective option. And while we do outspeed and bring him to a sliver, it's not enough damage to take him out, and a single freeze dry just ends Corefish. Leon is definitely going to heal here, so we have to go into Sceptile now. On Leon's full restore, thankfully our Leaf Blade is doing just over half, so we do get to put an end to Mr. Rhyme's dancing and take him out. This brings out Leon's Water Star next, but we know how powerful Sceptile is, and we tell him to Leaf Blade once more to take out Inteleon in one swift attack. This just leaves a Charizard left. This is kind of bad, but we do have an ace up our sleeve. Leon Gigantamax's Charizard, and we leaf blade for pitiful damage before Charizard's max airstream nuke Sceptile, and raises his speed. It all comes down to Snorlax. But this isn't any old Snorlax, it's a Gigantamax one. We Gigantamax 2 as Charizard hits a G-Max Wildfire that we tank like an absolute champ, before we reply with a G-Max Replenish that does fantastic damage to Charizard. We then take a Max Rockfall that honestly is tickling us, before a final G-Max Max replenish and knocks out Charizard. And with that, we defeat Leon, and Ash becomes champion of Gala. It's time to move on to the final region, Paldea. The last champion is Gita for Generation 9, and she's got some really unique Pokemon. We have to keep Snorlax too for the time being, as Swellow isn't in these games either. But I think we have a shot at taking down this last champion. Her lead is a Sparfer and our lead is Pikachu once more. Turn 1 we Thunderbolt for fantastic damage and we snag a Paralysis as the Sparfer sets up a Reflect boost in the team's defence. We Thunderbolt the next turn once more bringing a Sparfer to a Sliver as a single Lumina Crash puts us really low too. A final Thunderbolt from Pikachu and down her first Pokemon goes. Second out is Avalug. I stay in with Pikachu to get off some much needed damage and we do over half as an Earthquake brings down our Yellow Mouse. So my next best option is to send out Torkoal. With a fiery flamethrower, we melt the ice slab, and I'm starting to feel a bit confident. Next out, Gita sends out King Gambit, Bishop's evolution. It's steel type, so we don't need to switch, and I just flamethrower once more for massive damage, and we snag the burn, reducing the power of the incoming stone edge so we tank it nicely. A last flamethrower, and down falls a samurai. This brings out Veluza, the water fish, and well, it takes us out of a liquidation that critical hits. We send out Sceptile in return, and we hit a leaf blade to get revenge for Torkoal, but now it's go -Go. I swap immediately to Glalie as he goes for a bulk up, raising his attack stat. Thankfully, his defenses are not boosted though, and a freezing ice beam knocks out the goal, leaving Gita with our last Pokemon and her ace, Glamora. She terastalizes into a pure rock type as our ice beam does close to half. Then, a sludge wave brings us under half too. We ice beam to put Glamora on her sliver as she then goes for a terror blast, and that for sure brings down Glalie. I send out Corfish now, hoping for it to get the killing blow on Glamora, but it's faster than us and just takes down our poor Corfish. Fish. Okay, okay. Sceptile can now come out and finish the fight with a Leaf Blade, taking down Glamora, beating Gita and every single champion as Ash with his Hoenn team. Oh, have we? Atop of the Snowy Mount Silver is Legendary Trainer Red and a Champion Trainer at that. Also, with the final three bosses in front of us, I've upgraded our moveset to showcase our true power. We lead with Pikachu into Pikachu, Ash vs Red. Our Thunderbolt brings him low, but a Volt Tackle brings us to 10 HP, but we static their Pikachu. But we fall to Hail. Red now heals up his ace Pokemon, but a single Flamethrower from Torkoal brings Pikachu down. Second out is Blastoise. He Focus Blasts us as we set up the sun, removing Hail. Blastoise then misses a Focus Blast, and we just start throwing our Flamethrowers as we exchange a few moves. Moves. We manage to bring Blastoise low, but he then takes down Torkoal with a Focus Blast. Now I go into Sceptile, and we get revenge with a Leaf Blade. Red's next Pokemon is Charizard. In the sun, this is bad, but we have Rock Slide now, and Charizard falls to that too. Then is Red's Lapras. We swap into Corfish and we dodge an attack. 
We then rock slide Lapras and we get the flinch. We keep attacking, putting him on a sliver as the sidekick brings us really low. Red heals up Lapras, so we just keep rock sliding and we bring her to the red before Corfish falls. Now I send out Glalie and I shadow ball for the KO on Lapras. Next out is Snorlax. We just start ice beaming as he crunches us to get off as much damage as we can as it's so bulky. We snag a freeze, but he just falls out anyway. I manage to get him under half and then I go for my trump card. Self-destruct, taking us both out. This just leaves him with a venus or left so swallow is our best option here we aerial ace once for massive damage as we take a sludge bomb to the face but final aerial ace knocks out venusaur beating red as he disappears from the mountain and we continue team plasma n and the champion himself he's also got a legendary in reshiram we need to win to continue n leads with reshiram and we lead off with pikachu once again thunderbolt does pitiful damage and a single fusion flare nukes pikachu bad start i go into corefish next and we luckily dodge a hyper beam and we crab hammer for good damage. We then get hit from a hyper beam and we die. So I go into Sceptile and I rock slide Reshiram to a sliver of HP and heals him so I go for a Dragon Claw to bring him back down. Then I go for an Earthquake and this is luckily enough to take him out. N sends out Vanillix next. So I swap to Torkoal on the incoming Blizzard. Vanillix then sets up the hail as we flamethrower him to a sliver. We then get hit by a critical hit Frost Breath as we set up Stealth Rocks. Vanillix then flash cannons us for some reason, which we survive, so we take him down with a flamethrower. Out comes Caracosta, who immediately takes down Torkoal with an Aqua Jet. So, we go back into Sceptile. A full time super effective Leaf Blade is for sure enough to deal with the Water Turtle. Out is Kling Clang. Not risking it be a Zoroark, I stay in a Leaf Blade, and it is a Zoroark as Flamethrower brings us low. But we survive it, and we take it out the next turn. Enter the actual Kling Clang. An earthquake brings him low as we survive a flash cannon on a sliver ourselves. So the next turn, we get to take down the steel Pokemon. This just leaves an Archeops left. Takes 25% stealth rocks and then a leaf blade knocks out Archeops beating Team Plasma N and leaving one champion in Ash's way. Kieran, the most latest champion to be introduced and one of the hardest. This has a focus on double battles, but can we beat the final champion? Let's find out. No. No, we can't. This was impossible. I thought how was hard, but nope, this fight with these Pokemon was not happening. I tried over 20 times with different strategies, but the best we could do was get to his last Pokemon with just the Snorlax, who cannot 1v1 a fight in Terra Hydrapple. Honestly, we need to call for help to defeat this trainer, so we call upon Charizard, Tauros, and Snorlax to try and finally take down this monster of a champion. Kieran leads Politoed and Dragonite with an emphasis on a rain cell. We lead off with Charizard and Torko. To counter his rain strategy as Torkoal is slower, so we set up Drought rather than Politoed's rain. We then throw rocks at Dragonite, breaking multi-scale and doing good damage as Politoed's Ice Beam on Charizard and it does a little bit too. Dragonite decides to go for a Hurricane on Torkoal, but he misses thanks to no rain. We then Shell Smash with Torkoal, raising our special attack and speed by two stages, but we are a bit less bulky now. Now we throw rocks once more, fishing for a boost, but we don't get it, as with Torkoal we unleash a powerful solar beam to take out Politoed. Dragonite then goes for a hurricane once more but Torkoal dodges it and is this finally the RNG we need? Enter Porygon Z. I heat wave with Charizard for good damage on both as Porygon Z's Thunderbolt is way too powerful for Charizard and he falls. Torkoal then hits a sun boosted lava plume and takes out both Pokemon on the field. So far so good. I go into Tauros as Kieran sends out Grimmsnarl and Incineroar. We lower their attack as Incineroar lowers our attack with the move Intimidate. Incineroar then fakes out Tauros and Grimmsnarl sets up a light screen so Tauros doesn't get to attack and Torkoal's lava plume takes out our own Tauros. Tauros, but we do do good damage to the opposing Pokemon too. I now go into Glalie. Grimmsnarl sucker punches Torkoal as we just lava plume, taking out Grimmsnarl and taking out Glalie and whittling Incineroar slowly too. Incineroar then heals a little bit by eating his berry. Then he flare blitzes Torkoal for good damage and a little bit of recoil too. We're actually losing our answers to Incineroar once again. And now comes his ace Hydrapple. Kieran terrestrializes it into a pure fighting type. Torkoal lava plumes for good damage on the field as Incineroar brings Snorlax super low. Hydrapple then Earth Power finally brings down our Torkoal and Snorlax's Earthquake takes out Incineroar. This now leaves us with a two on one for Hydrapple. Sceptile comes out and Aerial Aces Hydrapple and Hydrapple Terror Blast Snorlax taking him out. This is coming down to the wire. We Aerial Ace once more but we don't take it out. 
Thankfully, Hydrapple's Fickle Beam doesn't go all out, or we lost again. But we survive, meaning Sceptile picks up the killing blow on Hydrapple, beating Kieran and beating every single champion as Ash catch him with his Hoenn team. Honestly, I'm surprised we could do this with Pokemon like Corfish and Pikachu, but they've shown their power once more. How and Kieran kept me busy for a very long time, but thanks to some substitutions, it was made possible. If you have any suggestions on who you want to see next, let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're new for more Pokemon content. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.